Welcome, everyone, and thanks for joining uh, this session of our webinar series. We have a Hello. great topic for you guys today. Uh, we'll be designing a primary bar and showing a couple different ways of designing uh, look, the... Look, Lucas, maybe we could maybe just wait one more minute so because still attendees mm -hmm. are joining the webinar, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, that's still... Oh, they're still pouring in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just did a pause a couple of minutes ago in the expert group. Maybe some of them just registered or joined. Still people are joining here, so I see on my list. So. Yeah, okay. I think now we can go on. All right. Sorry for that. Yeah, it's all right. All right, welcome everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, today on our next session in our webinar series. We have a great topic uh, for everyone today. We'll be designing a primary bar and then showing you two different ways of designing the offset substructure over the bar. I'm joined today by my colleagues, uh, Friedman Stang, Application Support Specialist at ExoCAD, and Michael Conan, Global Manager of Application Support. A couple of quick points before we get started. Uh, feel free to ask questions during the webinar by typing them into the question box in your GoToWebinar panel. Uh, when you ask a question, uh, we ask you just to be detailed as possible and if reference a specific tool, step, or setting that you're asking about, and that will help us get you a, a better, quicker answer. Also, the webinar uh, will be recorded, and you can access that at a later date at exocad.com forward slash webinars. So a quick rundown of the agenda. So we'll go through in Dental DB. We'll show you how to set up a case um, for a bar, then go through the design process, and then we'll go through and design um, a couple different types of offset substructures and show some new features in the positive release for that. And then if we have some time at the end, we'll um, go through some more questions, but also feel free to ask questions all the way through the webinar also. So let's get started with the software. I'm going to pull up Dental DB. So this is our bar case here. So you notice we have two different work types specified. So for the implant sites, teeth 19, 22, 27, and 30, we have those set up for bar pillars. So if I click on one of these teeth here, we can see the work type selected under primary units, bar pillar. We have non-precious metal specified for that. And then over in options and parameters, up for implant base, we set that to screw retained. And then um, this is optional, but we do have a pre-op uh, scan that we're pulling in for this case as well. And then for the bar segments, that's a different work type selection here, also under primary units, and that's this option here. And set that to the same metal, same material. All right, so let's click design and we'll launch Dental CAD. So when the software starts, it'll load. Um, we're going to be doing this on a lower arch, so we'll see our scan and our pre-op scan. And then this one, we have it set up um, so it did not include implant position uh, information right away, so that's why we have our scan flag showing. So there'll be an additional step in the wizard <clears throat> to align our scan bodies. So first step in the wizard is correcting the placement of the pre-op scan, if necessary. So if your scan wasn't aligned during the scan process, you can freely move that here in manual mode or in automatic mode. If you have similar data on your pre-op scan and your model scan, you can mark points on each and go through an automated alignment here. So our pre-op scan is already aligned correctly, so we can click Next to continue here. Next, we come to the um, implant position detection step. 
So here's our four scan flags for the four implant positions. So here we're going to be choosing ExoCAD demo implant library, but this is where you would choose the specific brand of implant system that you'd use, and then your um, platform diameter, and then any additional options that show for that system. So I'm going to select bar with pre-op here. So then our screen showing the optimum placement of our control point on the scan body shows up. So for tooth number 19, I'm going to click in the center of that circular area. You can see our orange implant library shows up there. And I'm going to click best fit matching to complete the alignment. Then to go to the next tooth, I'll click next. So now we're on tooth number 22. Click in the center of the circle area. Optionally here, uh, keyboard shortcut, if I hold down control key while clicking best fit matching, that will bring up a color map showing us the accuracy uh, of the alignment. <clears throat> so this one, since the scan bodies are so similar and really accurate, we're at the blue level. So that means that theoretically that there's not really any deviation between the two. So if we happen to see color approaching the green, yellow, or red area, that means we're kind of getting a larger deviation that alignment there. So I'll click next. Tooth number 27, same thing. Place our point, best fit matching. Then the last position here for tooth number 30. And that completes our alignment step here. So now we're at the emergence profile step. Uh, this is really optional for bars. Um, typically, we'll, we'll skip past this. Um, but if you have a situation where you want to define an emergence profile, um, just like designing an implant abutment, you can do that here, either by placing points or manually drawing your outline. So for this particular case, I'm just going to click Next and bypass this step here. I'll just click Next for each tooth position. Now the software has loaded um, our default anatomy library, so we can do our tooth setup. It's going to go right over to Chain Mode. It'll allow us to quickly adjust the arch here and kind of match our pre-op scan. So it's left clicking and dragging on the entire arch. Then in chain mode, I'm just going to left click on the blue disks posterior of our first molars here and just set our molar position. So on the left molar here, once I get that where I need it, I'll click that green control point below the disk to lock in that position. Then go over on the right side and adjust this molar. And then click the control point to lock that tooth in position. And now I can click on any other tooth on the arch and kind of shape our arch shape here. I'm going to go to the anteriors and get those into position. You can use our keyboard shortcut, uh, Control and Shift here. So Control for Rotate, and then Shift for Scaling. Those can both be used uh, with the Chain Mode tool here. So lock in our interiors. Adjust the rest of the arch here. So it's going around and making some adjustments to tooth angle and position here. Once our tooth setup looks good, we'll click Next. So now we're at the step Generate Abutment Bottoms. Um, this is another optional step. Um, I'll turn off our preparation scan and pre-op scan for a second here. So when we get to the next step and start designing the uh, bar, the pillars will be the diameter of the implant platform here. So there might be um, instances where you want to 
start with slightly larger diameter pillars, and you can do that by adjusting your abutment bottom diameter a little bit here. So if I make that flare out a little bit, the pillar diameter will start slightly bigger in the next step here. So maybe for posterior units, um, or for instances where you need a larger diameter pillar, you can do that at this step. So both posterior ones, I made slightly bigger. I'll leave the anterior units at that default diameter. Then we'll click Next. The next step here, this is really the uh, main part of the bar module here. So first thing that shows up, the software calculates our pillar shapes and our profile, stretching that bar segment between our pillars. So let's start off in the uh, wizard panel here. So you can see on the screen, we have a lot of control points on the bar and on the pillar segments. So our tools on the first tab under profile in the wizard are essentially filters for the control tools that show up on the screen. So the first one I've selected that says bar slash pillars, that's all the controls visible. If I switch to bar only, that will only show the control points on the bar itself. If I switch to pillars, that will just show us the control points just for pillars. And sometimes as we're designing, it might get a little confusing with so many control points on the screen. So this lets you kind of just focus on the item that you're working on and, and limit the control points that are shown. The other one here, borders, turn off our scan for a second. It's not really applicable for this case, but what this does is set up an area just above the implant interface. And what it does, if our bar segment extended down that far, any material that would stick in past that uh, border area would be trimmed away. So that just ensures if you want to have a certain amount of clearance around your implant interface, um, which may be required for, for milling. And these are adjustable uh, by dragging these control points here if you need to change the shape of that segment there. And then there's a checkbox control over here. If you don't want those on the screen, we can turn those off. Turn our scan back on. Uh, the other button here, preview result. At any time as you're working and designing, you can click preview result to kind of calculate um, what a finished uh, bar shape would look like. We'll use that tool a little later on here. So another useful feature up in the um, show hide area, we have separate items up here for the pillars and the profile. So sometimes you want to maybe get the bar out of the way and just see your pillars. You have separate uh, control items up here and some visibility sliders for those. On the right side, in the upper right corner, we have this panel called Profiles. <clears throat> this is another key tool here. So this essentially determines the shape of the, of the bar segment here. So for this case, we will be using the primary bar shape, but if I click this arrow under the type box, you can see we have a whole lot of different uh, profile shapes you can select. And most of these are customizable either by controls on the screen or by adjusting settings here under profile parameters. So if I click this arrow here under profile parameters, it shows all the applicable settings for this uh, profile shape that I have selected. So we can adjust height, width, angle of the lingual or buckle face, minimum heights and widths. For this one, I'm um, gonna change the width. We'll change that to two and a half millimeters. So it's gonna type in 2.5. And when I do that, any setting I change here, that instantly updates our cross-section view up at the top here, and it updates the bar on the screen. Another useful feature here, if you have uh, profile settings that you use a lot, you kind of want to develop your own uh, custom profile, you can come over here and click this uh, Save button, the disk icon, type a useful name for your profile, and save that. And then on future cases, that will be available on the drop-down list here. So it kind of saves you some time uh, from adjusting settings a lot if you have a, a common bar shape that, that you like. Another useful tool here, we'll jump down to the bottom uh, under options. So right now we have the same bar profile going across the whole bar. There might be circumstances where you want to specify maybe a different profile shape for a certain segment. So I just clicked on this center segment here just to highlight that one. 
click on apply to selection and then choose a different uh, bar profile here, keyhole for example, and that will change that section to a different profile shape. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to primary. We'll minimize our parameter section, kind of stash that up in the corner here. All right, so let's get into design of the bar here. So we're gonna turn our pre-op scan back on. So to move the position of the uh, bar segments, any of these control points in the center and that green point, I can left click that and drag that around. So I'm gonna move this section over here. We're gonna have the ends kind of terminate in our posterior pillars here. So using a combination of looking through the pre-op scan and looking at the ridge on our surface scan, we kind of determine where we want the bar segments positioned here. Um, Lucas, sorry to yep, interrupt. Yeah, sure. There's an interesting question. Um, I'm not sure if you have showed it already. So, um, it's about the bar pillar axis direction. So. The, uh, the uh, question is um, bar pillar axis in direction of implant direction, not in bar direction of axis. How to overcome this for snap on secondary? Um, yeah, so by adding another curve on the pillar with control, uh, shift, and left mouse, you can add a curve. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I maybe can show you show that feature maybe now. Yep, yep. I didn't uh, show it yet, but let's take a look at that real quick here. Turn off our pre-op scan. So that, um, let's switch over to pillar controls. Let's pull one of these up real quick here. So on the uh, on the pillars, by default, there's just one uh, control point here. So if I click and drag that horizontal arrow, that will taper the pillar. This green vertical area in the screw channel will adjust our height. There might be instances where you want to taper just uh, just one side of that pillar. So if I hold down the control key, click and add an additional control point, I can taper just one side. And then that uh, tool that uh, Michael was just talking about, if I hold down the shift and control keys at the same time, left click on the pillar, this message just comes up uh, just asking us if we're sure we want to add an additional set of control points here. So that adds another line going through here where I can adjust that taper. So we can essentially have two different uh, tapers on a pillar to yeah, compensate and, for. And, it, and yep. it's not just two tapers. The area above the this curve will follow the insertion axis of, of the bar. That's, that's very important to know. I think many people okay. don't know this option. So um, it's not absolutely parallel because there's in the advanced options of the bar, you can define an angle of your pillar, and it just means that the angle above uh, this curve is higher uh, compared to the insertion direction, so it's more conical. If you, if you desire to have a parallel uh, pillar, I would recommend to add four points on the top curve, and then with control and shift, you pull out all the control points on the top curve outwards, and then you create a parallel, uh, yeah, mm. I see that now you okay. create a parallel uh, pillar. Okay, that's it from my Yeah, side. good points, good points. So back on our um, positioning here, so let's turn back on our bar controls. Just gonna finish positioning this from our top view here. Like I mentioned on the other side, we're gonna have that terminate in our distal pillars, or posterior pillars. Um, optionally, if I pull that point, if we did want to have a cantilever end on the bars, we can pull that point out and extend that. All right, so from this view, once we get the bar positioned correctly, I'm gonna to switch to looking straight on from anterior direction. A useful tool for 
kind of developing the height here, you can see we have all different uh, slopes and, and the bar segments are kind of angled all over the place. So if I go over and click on this checkbox, show planes, this will show a green horizontal reference plane based on the uh, bar direction. So let's turn off the pre-op scan for a second here. And I can click on this arrow and adjust that uh, an angle of that plane. So once I let go of the mouse button, the bar updates. So the top surface of the bar will be parallel to that uh, plane there. I just angle it to the patient's right side a little bit here. So the green plane is the reference in that additional yellow plane here. This um, moves as I move a control point on the bar. So this is a useful tool for determining if we want if we're going to have the bar all at the same level, this will help us visualize uh, the height and, and line up these control points here. Yeah, and again, there is another interesting question. Is, okay. there, is there a measurement available for the cantilever length with AP consideration measurement available? Yes, so if... Yeah, let me extend out one of the segments yeah. here. The numbers are a little small on the screen, but when I left click and drag on that point there, you can see two percentage numbers showing up. So the one towards the top of the screen, now it's starting to turn uh, yellow, and then eventually that will turn red. So that's indicating that we're getting that cantilever section too long here. Uh, so if I can zoom out and see the whole thing here. Yeah, so you can see that bottom section, it calculates from an anterior point so about 35 millimeters, 80%. And those will change as I move and position that pillar there as a guideline for how far back we can pull that. All right, so let's go back to horizontal view here. Another useful uh, tool for controlling the height, uh, turn the visibility on our pillars down a little bit. Make those a little translucent here. Okay. I'll just do that so I can see all of the uh, bar segment control points here. So if I go back here to one of these points that I have at the correct height that I want, if I click on one of the lighter blue horizontal areas uh, arrows here, that will make the control point next to it jump to the exact same height that that one is. That's really useful just for ensuring that we um, – kind of achieve the, the uniform height all across the bar. So I can go across, keep clicking those arrows, and that will cause the point adjacent to it to jump to that same height. Okay. Let's go to the other side of the arch. And also, let's see, I think if I hold down control when I click one, it will cause multiple to go. Yeah, okay. All right. So you can see I have a nice uniform bar height all across the arch here. Um, let's jump over to advanced. So you can see we adjusted the height, but we're off the tissue quite a bit in certain spots. So you can adjust that manually with the pink control arrows underneath here. I can pull that down to bring that to the tissue. Or in the advanced tab over here, there's a checkbox uh, that says pull down. I can check that and the software will automatically pull that down to match the tissue. And if we want a, a certain space there, I can type that in that distance box here. So in certain areas, you might notice we still have a pretty sizable gap there where it didn't exactly pull it down to the tissue. I found that what usually will help that if I added an additional control point there. So if I just hold down control key, click on the bar segment, add another control point there, that will cause that to more closely adapt to the tissue there in that spot. Another useful tool here on this uh, tab, um, we have these buttons that say edgy or rounded over here. So this, if I click on the rounded one, it will change it so there's a lot smoother transition between the control points there. We don't have a distinct uh, an angle at each junction there. 
So I'll leave that on rounded. We'll jump back to the profile step here. So the next thing I'll show you is how to get um, kind of a more smooth transition from the bar into the pillar itself here. So let's make the pillars visible. And I'm going to do that just by adding um, several more control points here. And then clicking and dragging on the horizontal areas. And that you can really use to make a nice smooth transition into the pillars here. And then as we're working, this is where the preview button comes in handy. Uh, we come over, click on preview result, and take a look and, and kind of see what our finished product will look like there. So I'll go back to bar controls to get out of preview and just go ahead and adjust the other transitions here. Add a couple more control points here. Click and drag on the larger horizontal arrows here. All right, let's jump on the other side of the arch. Add some more control points here. And finally, on this uh, last pillar here. All right, so the next feature we'll add here, we're coming along. Okay, so the next tab, let's jump over to attachments. Um, we'll start off on the add uh, drop down box here. So a couple different types of attachments here. Uh, the ones under this first one will be additive parts. Uh, for this one, I'll show you something kind of like a locator type uh, attachment here. So that would be under the bolted section. And, and those, you can tell the difference. Um, when it shows up red in that picture, that means it's going to be subtractive. So that will remove material away from the bar uh, when it's placed here. So I'll leave um, a space where that can be threaded for uh, screw-in type attachments here. So I can left-click and place on the bar section to place that attachment there. That will automatically be placed at the top uh, surface of the bar. One thing that affects how it's positioned when I click it on there is this docking point over here. It's a little tricky to see through the uh, shape there, but you can see there's a point kind of at the bottom surface of that uh, wide flange there. So if I change that location of that point, so if I click on center, it comes down to the vertical center of the attachment, place one. I can see it's lifted up off the bar a little bit. So the position of the docking point affects how it gets uh, placed on the bar. So we'll delete that one. Change it back to that position. Look from our vertical viewpoint here. We'll place two more locator style attachments here. Let's have those attachments placed. I'm going to jump back to the profile tab. Go up to the slider for the attached parts. Make those a little bit translucent here. I'll show you how to adjust the uh, bar segment to add a little more support for those. So again, we're just going to add some more control points here. And usually two under the attachment, and then one on either side of it will, will be good. So then I pull these two center ones out. Just pass the attachment. Just to bulk that up and add a 
nice broad surface for that attachment mount there. Same thing for there too, I'll place two in the center, one on either side. Pull the two centers out. And finally, in our third attachment here, we'll do that same thing. All right, that looks pretty good. Nice transitions into the pillars. Final thing we'll take a look at, uh, let's see, switch back to the pillar control here, and we'll just make these a little more tapered here. It'll bring the height of this one down a little bit here. All right, so then we'll hit preview, and we can see what those attachment areas will look like when that material gets uh, subtracted. So you can see the mounting points for those three attachments there, and the um, <clears throat> material removed where the uh, threaded part of the attachment would go. All right, that looks pretty good. So let's go next here. Uh, so this is a... Uh, telling us that the insertion direction is different from the insertion direction of the uh, bar insertion path. So we can click on um, correct manually if we want to go back and adjust our attachments, or we can keep going and ignore that difference there. So here with the freeform step, so um, add move tools and smooth and flatten. If there's any areas on the bar you want to touch up, for instance, with the smooth tool, if there's any uneven transitions of material here, we can go in and blend that in. Any other edges you want to soften or, or blend transitions here, we can do that pretty easily. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's go next again here. So we're at the end of the um, bar design step. So the software is going to merge that and save the STL file of the, our bar design. So there's our finished product here. You can see that adapted to the shape of the surface scan on the ridge. All right, let's jump back to PowerPoint here while that's saving. So the other things we're gonna go through today are the um, offset substructure. So there's really two ways of setting those up. So the first one here in DB would be selecting the work type offset coping. And that would create an offset structure um, pretty much directly over the bar and following the same margin of the where the bar intersects the uh, ridge. And then the implant type that you would select for that is on substructure scan, e.g. bar. The other way to do it would be to choose um, a coping as your work type, and that will bring in a workflow um, if you also select a virtual gingiva where you can design um, reduced tooth structures and a virtual gingiva shape that fits right over the bar itself and that for the uh, implant type for that type you'd also select on substructure scan and then offset substructure this is a new work type in plovdiv build so that's under the appliances and removals area and this um, it adds on to the offset coping in that you can select, you select the margin around the bar and then you also select a line further down on the uh, on the ridge. So you can really extend that material out and provide better support uh, for the acrylic uh, the overdenture. 
Next slide here, we have um, kind of a grid just showing, recapping on the different um, features and, and setup of those three different types there. So the ones I'll show you, we'll go through offset coping and then offset substructure. And we'll see if we have time, uh, if anybody wants to run through the substructure with Gingiva, let's see if we have time for that one. So let's jump back to the software here. We'll pull up the offset coping type first. So here in DB, you can see how we have this specified. Let's just work type offset coping. Under crowns and copings, we have NP metal material set up for this. In plant based, we have the option on substructure bar selected. I'll click design. So the input to this um, is a surface scan of the complete milled and fabricated bar uh, back on the uh, working model. So screw holes would be blocked out ideally for this step. So the first step to load here is a 3D data editor in the wizard. So here you have the option of trimming the scan or filling holes if you need to. Uh, sometimes it's, it's helpful if uh, large holes or uh, defect areas on your scan, you can clean that up real quick to start here. Next step that's gonna load, uh, the software is going to calculate, um, rotate this. So a lot of times when we scan the bar, we have gaps underneath um, where the scanner can't get to. So the software is going to project the surface of the bar down to the ridge and kind of close up that area. We can see that with the blue color here. So it, it's detected the insertion path here. If I want to change that, um, we can adjust the insertion from view here if we need to. The next thing we have to do here is place at least four points uh, for the software to detect a margin line around the bar. So we're just clicking points right at that junction line where that blue surface hits the ridge here. So after I click four points, the software will start calculating that margin line. Then once it calculates, if there's any issues, just like regular margin lines, I can go over to the correct draw tab and adjust points that way if we need to. But usually, since it has a nice edge to follow, the software is pretty accurate at finding that margin. So that looks good, so I'll click Next. Next step will be the design wax up bottom. Few more seconds on calculation time here. All right, so you can see our step here, we have our cement gap section. So this really affects the fit of that offset source cluster over the bar. So depending on your manufacturing processes and how that fits over there, you can come in here and make adjustments. So just like our regular cement gap settings, you can adjust the distance here. You can use the paint tools if you want to adjust the paint on different areas. So for example, if we want to adjust or add areas of no cement gap here, we can do that. It's also useful um, to put some areas on top surface of the bar with no cement space. That kind of acts as a physical stop uh, when that substructure is placed down over the bar. So once you have your cement gap settings adjusted accordingly, you can also adjust uh, our border section. So if you want to change the margin thickness here. So typically we don't need too thick of a margin here. And again, it kind of depends on how that's being manufactured, and how you want that set. And then undercuts, standard undercut settings here. We'll click next to accept the fall values for those. Now the software is going to generate the thickness uh, surface for the substructure.
There you can see that real quick, quick the minimal thickness surface flash there. Now we have our offset coping surface here. So we can use uh, anatomic tools if we want to just click and drag areas of that to adjust. Or we can do a free form. And attachment tabs, so it's really useful for this. Um, I'll show you a way, this is another new feature in the Plavdiv build is the ring donut retention tools here. So especially if the bar uh, doesn't extend posteriorly under the molars, you can use this tool to add um, additional support uh, for acrylic teeth here. So if I click under type, you have a whole bunch of different options here uh, for donut shape sizes. I'll click on donut two. Bring over that over to our surface shape and left click to place that. You can use a control key to rotate. Bring that up off the tissue a little bit. Left click and drag to move. And then we can also use the uh, scaling button here. to adjust the size here. Click apply, and then we'll place one on the other side here. Let's bring that up off the ridge a little bit. Once that's positioned where we need to, I'll click Apply, and then Next. Oh, still calculating the ring shape. Okay. All right, there we go. That finished placing that. Once it's done adding that attachment there, now we can proceed. So that's pretty much finished for this type. We won't wait until that whole case saves here. While that's working, let me bring up the case for the next type here. So a similar type structure is going to set that case up a different way here. So let's load this one. So this one, we're still designing an offset substructure, and there's a specific uh, work type for that here. So I'll click on one of these teeth that we have selected. And this will be under appliances and removables. We have the work type offset substructure selected. Again, we have that set up for NP metal. And we do have a pre-op scan on this case. So that's set to yes there. Let's check on our other one. That one did finish. That's the finished product of the offset coping structure. So let's close out of this case here. and go back and launch our offset substructure one. I'll show you the main differences in, with this work type here. So load scan data. We can see you're starting a similar point as the other one. We have our surface scan of the bar on the working model. Turn our pre-op scan off. And the position was set up correctly from scanning, so we don't need to adjust our pre-op scan placement. Now we're at uh, 3D Data Editor. So again, we'll just go through and close that section of holes here. Click Next. So we saw this in the uh, last one. Software has um, put that blue surface on there and projected the surface of the bar down to the ridge. So same thing here. We just need to click several points to as a starting point for the software to mark that margin around the bar. Uh, 
All right, that margin has been selected and that looks accurate. So we'll click next. Smink gap step. Adjust those similar to last time if needed. We'll click next to go to the next step here. I almost finished calculating here. Okay, so this step we can see it has two arrows, so it's marked the insertion path of the bar. And then optionally, if we want to change that here, I can set insertion direction from view. Um, also under bottom properties, we can change the offset value. So this is basically the distance from the surface scan to the underside of the, of the structure um, as it gets to the ridge. The smoothing value, um, this affects how closely the um, wax up bottom matches the shape of the ridge. So if this slider is over to the left, it's going to more closely act, uh, match the shape of the surface scan. If I bump that over to the right, it's going to um, smooth that out and not be not replicate that surface quite as much. And then of course for milled, uh, milled appliance, we can change the tool diameter here. And blockout settings, if you want to change the blockout angle, we can do that as well. So we'll click apply to generate that surface here. Software will calculate the uh, virtual blockout surface over our bar and ridge here. All right, that surface has been calculated. Um, here we have the option of going to the freeform tab. If there's any areas you want to adjust the blockout wax on, you can add, remove, and use smooth tools here as well. Otherwise, we'll click next. So this is uh, what really sets apart this um, workflow from setting it up as a offset coping. So here um, we have the margin that was already set around the bar itself. And now I can go in and set this line. This will be the outer perimeter of the offset structure here. So however far you want that material to extend on the ridge, that's where we're placing points here. So we can go back and bring that further posterior as well on the ridge. Let's continue placing points until you get all the way back to the first one and double click to join those back up. Um, as soon as I finish placing that last point, the software calculates the surface. Um, if you want to adjust settings before it calculates, there's settings for base thickness, uh, which is thickness of the material towards the ridge and then gingiva thickness, adjust the um, material further up. Um, towards the bar surface. And then that smoothing setting, similar to the one before, if that's further to the left, it will more closely match the shape of the surface scan in the bar. If I bump that to the right, it will um, be a flatter, smoother surface and not follow those contours as closely. So after that calculates, we can see our offset substructure surface here. If we need to go back and change any of those points, I can click and drag those and make adjustments. Let's open our cut tool real quick and see what that surface looks like here. So you can see minimum, th minimum thickness setting there. The white line in the center is our bar shape. And you can see our offset substructure shape extending down onto the ridge in certain areas there. So let's click next to accept that design. All 
Once this calculation step finishes, we'll have the option of using uh, freeform tools on the surface, similar to the last one. We can make adjustments and add attachments if we want to. Almost finished here. Yes, there were a couple of questions so yeah, far. Yeah, good time for questions. Let's take a yeah, but, calculator. But, uh, unfortunately, most of them were very, very specific. So maybe they are not so interesting to be discussed here. And we have answered to them uh, individually. Um, I can just take one more general question. Somebody's asking here if we could also do a webinar on a partial cut software. This is also planned. So for all of you, please check out on our website, exacut.com slash webinars. There you will find the entire schedule. We still plan two more weeks uh, with webinars on different topics and in different languages in different time zones. Yeah, so maybe Friedemann, you have another interesting technical question, maybe? Uh, no, at the moment, not really anything. Okay. It's not highly specific. So as I said, they were very specific, for example, question about the attachments, how to create an attachment, how to design attachments about, uh, okay. um, about the milling, uh, the construction info, information in the construction info for the CAMS software. So I think that's too specific to explain it here. Yeah, we can follow up with some of those questions after. Okay. So our substructure did finish calculating finally on the screen. So as I mentioned, it brings you back to a freeform substructure step. So here you can freeform the surface, add additional attachments for retention if needed. Uh, so let me just quickly show you a different uh, ring donut shape here. So this one has a little bit more vertical dimension to it. Bring that up off the ridge a little bit here. Okay. Let's do one side. Okay, so you can see there's several different um, ring attachment shapes in there that are really really useful for adding additional support in our structure here. So let's do that one side. It's going to calculate and add that attachment to the structure surface. Yes, there was one interesting question. Um, is there a way to design the bar and the superstructure in one design window? Um, actually, not officially, I would say, but there's a nice workaround to do that. You can uh, at any time design your primary bar in a project and in the scene file at the end of the design, the best would be to do that before merging uh, because then the holes are closed. Then you do a right click in the background and you save uh, the jaw scan together with the um, with the bar design as an STL. Then you duplicate the project and then you load this STL as the jaw scan and then with the superstructure reconstruction type, you can then design uh, the, uh, the superstructure on the primary bar. That's the same, for example, also for telescopic crowns uh, or other kind of uh, restorations where you'd like to create some secondary structure on the primary part uh, where we do not provide uh, official workflow. 
Cool. Okay. Yeah. Our substructure furnace calculating here. So you can see on the screen, this is what the final product would look like here. You can see the cavity that would fit over the bar structure there. And then the surface that extends down onto the ridge. So that's a really useful option with that uh, work type there. So that's the end of uh, the material that we have to present here today. Um, if you guys have any other questions or, or comments that we need to get to here? Yeah, that's just another question about the next webinar. So as I said, um, yeah, yeah he's, he's asking we about uh, here. he's asking about cement retained apartments. Um, um, this is actually not yet planned, but um, obviously we will extend uh, the period of uh, our webinars, or maybe we will do that. Uh, let's say once a month in the future or something like that and um, yeah we will see it's nothing official yet but I think that we will do something in the future. Yeah if anybody else is wondering we have the up on the screen you can see the website and list of currently planned topics um, so you can visit exocad.com forward slash webinars take a look at that list there and register for any of these upcoming ones as well as view the recordings for the ones that we've already done so that's a really useful site so I encourage you everybody to take a look at that. Anything else Michael or should we uh, about wrapping up here? No, there's just one more question, but I think okay. Friedemann can answer to that. Okay. Um, okay, no, that's it from my side. So thank you, Lucas. Thank you guys for your time, for being here. And yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. I'll see you at the next one. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.